Former Senate President Ken Namani has said the demand for a president of Igbo extraction in 2023 was justified as they have shown more commitment to Nigeria than any other ethnic group. Namani, who spoke to journalists in his Amechi Akuno country home in Enugu during a reception organized in his honor by some All Progressive Congress APC in the state. Igbo are not known to be shy. It is left for them to make the necessary noise to let the world tell the world that they are part of Nigeria. But political positions are not a buffer where you will take rice, beans, egg or whatever you want. If you want something, you work for it. However, the Afenifera Renewal Group, ARG, had said Yoruba will hold Bola Tinubu, Chief Bisia Konde, Governor Kayade Fawemi and others responsible if the Southwest failed to clinch the presidential ticket of the APC. We're now joined by Mazio Ku, legal practitioner, to speak on this. It's a pleasure to have you join us on the news. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Do you support the view that Nigeria has not seen an Igbo president because the Igbos are not united? Yes, as I was saying, I said that uh, apart from the struggle, uh, I'm talking about uh, the, second, the Second Republic, apart from the struggle in the MPN that eventually uh, won the election through Lagishu uh, Shagari, there were other dozen candidates like uh, the GMPP, the uh, Ibrahim Waziri, and um, Aminu Kano of the of the PRP. So there is, there is no issue of Igbo and unanimity or consensus or whatever. It's a matter is a risk of the fittest. Let the fittest win. So I don't buy that argument that Igbos are not united. It's not. No, 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 no. As soon as a, a, an Igbo candidate emerges on a major platform and does the right things by world campaign and uh, uh, national uh, 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 would I say alignment, he would win. Uh, do you see that happening in 2023? Sorry? Do you see that happening in 2023? Well, 2023 is a different kettle of fish in the sense that, as far as I'm concerned, unless there are certain realignments down the road, as the cards are stacked today, it's a straight fight between the APC and the PDP. In the APC, knowing how parties run, I'm a lot of experience in party administration, Dominant caucus of the APC is between Tinibu's ACN and Mushaga and Buhari's uh, CPC. I don't see any Nigerian of Igbo extraction emerging from the APC. I don't see that at all. Politics being politics. In the PDP, uh, well, uh, there's a better chance for an Igbo, a Nigerian of Igbo extraction to emerge from PDP. But unfortunately, it does appear that uh, Atiku would like to have a second bite. So that militates against an Igbo candidate emerging from the PDP for 2003. But like well, I said, all things remain equal. I think stand today. Well, what's your take on the zoning conversation? Um, I mean, presidency has been zoned to uh, different uh, areas. How progressive is it really for us to still be talking about zoning at this point in our national history? Well, uh, you know how zoning came about. Zoning came first in the Second Republic when the MPN zoned. The idea was for it as a transitional measure for national integration, after which it will fade away. Unfortunately, it has not. During the Abacha's constitutional conference, QMA uh, came up with uh, three types of uh, zonal arrangements, six geopolitical zones, and the president used to go around. It wasn't adopted or made into law since Abacha's government failed and Abu Salami came in. But the fact remains that it is kind of accepted practice. Zones are now, geopolitical zones are now recognized in Nigerian politics, if not in the Nigerian law. Meanwhile, uh, the PDP, that was dominant party for the last 16 years or thereabouts, recall, had a zoning principle in their constitution. The PDP. I doubt if it is in the APC constitution. But it's acceptable political practice that uh, it now moves from the north to the south. But like I said, it's not cast in stone. It's not, it's, not, it's not a done deal. If tomorrow the APC were to come up with a uh, president of another extraction as candidate, there's nothing you can do about it. It's not, against, it's not against the law. It may be impolitic. It may be immoral. But what police is not about morality. All if right. tomorrow again the PDP comes with a presidential candidate from the north, there's nothing you can do about it. It's all politics.
All right, before we let you go, uh, let's talk about um, the effect of a group from the Igbo extraction pursuing a secessionist agenda. How productive or how helpful is it in pushing uh, for the Igbo presidency? Well, you see, two things. Two things. Let us get one that's very clear. Certain zones of the country, like the North uh, Central, have had more than their fair share of the presidency of Nigeria. Katina State in the Northwest has had about two eyes. To Katina today, I go to the North, I go to the North Central. Is there any obvious advantage in terms of development or poverty indices to show for they having had a, a double bite at the presidency? I, I think the answer is no. So presidency for presidency is not the issue. Maybe for sense of national belonging, emotional, okay. But I tell you that Mbibo, the grassroots Mbibo, who I see every day in my village here, are more interested in a just federation, in national uh, fairness, not Igbo president or present Igbo extraction. If we are to have a just federation and have a fair nation, Igbo will find their feet, as usual. So right. the presidency is not the priority. And that is why there is big uh, support for referendum and exit at the grassroots. Because they see it as an answer to the marginalization, the victimization, the unjust practices meted on them by the Nigerian state. All right, uh, Mr. Mazi Oku, thank you very much uh, for your time and insight you've provided on the matter.